missing playing for England. Of course, as recently as what six months ago you were. Are you pleased yep. to be watching now? Um, no, I, I can't say I ever really enjoy watching because I I enjoy periods of play like what I've just seen. Uh, get all excited and. Um, into it, I was actually, you know, obviously quite animated just now. What, when you were leaning out of the <laughs> yeah. window shouting, come on? <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the one. Uh, Look at that there's no camera in there, so that was, you know, that went over everyone. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I can't not miss all the things that were great. The crowds, the atmosphere, having a ball in your hand and being in control, um, being able to do what you want with it um, and have success, like the moments that you have that are successful are very rare so those moments were always really really big like way bigger than anything else that you did so it just made up for it and and they're the they're the bits that i miss i don't miss warming up i don't miss getting hit in the inside thigh in the nets and i don't miss my back hurting because i've bowled 40 overs that week <laughs> yeah do, do you still have a little element of of the lifestyle and the link just because nat's still in the team and you, and you of course inevitably going to be in and around the squad yeah definitely and uh, I think people know but me and Natalie have, have spent every minute of every day together just because of that particular fact like um, we go on tour and obviously say, see each other every day all day at, at practice not at practice on days out and then when we come home we're together every day there's no other jobs that we do that are separate um, and so we've gotten very used to being in each other's pocket so when it comes to what was happening now I'm very much going to follow her all around the world um, and support her every step of the way so I'm going to have to get used to watching the cricket yeah well you are and I know it wasn't easy watching that the other <laughs> yeah. night and Grace Thompson asked the question how does it feel to play alongside Natalie and, and mm. what are your emotions if say when you were playing together she drops the ball off your bowl I mean it is it is an interesting dynamic yeah it is it's you you like obviously like I said I spent every minute of every day with her so I know her potential and I'm sure you know it now but I knew that 10 years ago and I, like I said I, I set really high standards for myself and for all my teammates not just Natalie so when you know it's things like that happen you absolutely have to keep your cool no matter who they are whether it's her or not but if somebody if somebody's always got to get the grief don't they and it's either because that's just how human human emotion works somebody you're going to take it out on someone and you're going to feel bad about it but somebody's got to get got to get it and, and generally not you know for want of a better word bore the bear the brunt of that mm. um but there was always a way where, because she's so patient and, and mellow, she would just, you know, that would be like water off a duck's back. And then I'd be like, oh, I think I was a little bit mean then. Um, I'm ever so sorry. <laughs> Can we be friends now? <laughs> right. Yeah, so and we never fight. We never fight because she is like what she is. Um, and that's why we are together, because she's perfect for me. And, I, and I'd like to think, you know, in the same way. And you're that sort of... Yeah, 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 and, yeah, that's exactly it. And it wouldn't work otherwise. It just really wouldn't because of, you know, my personality and how I tick. So, yeah, um, that was kind of the, the dynamic. But we also brought the best out in each other. I've been probably bowling at Nat since she first came on the scene and we'd have battles all the time. I always wanted to be better than her because we were all-rounders. Her very much a batting all-rounder, me a bowling all-rounder. But I would constantly want to be better at her at both. And in the beginning, it was always that way. Um, and I would like to think that I helped encourage her to be better. Um, you've got to replicate the middle, the fiery, very extremely competitive stuff that goes on out there. You have to replicate that in training, and I very much had that with Natalie. Mm. And we spoke before play, actually, about where England would find that fire mm. today, and I think they have shown a little they bit have. more of that. Do, do, you, do you look back and think, you know, that was part of my job in that team was was being a little bit of that voice that noise yeah. that passion for the first 10 years Lottie used to throw me the balls the ball for that specific reason so I'd open the bowling I'd finish the innings and she'd lob me the ball at the power play at 34 
because she wanted something. She knew that she would limit the run scoring with me, but she'd always want me to... There'd be other times where she needed a wicket, and if she did it, she'd lob me the ball. Because even if I didn't get a, wi a wicket, it, there would be animation. I'd make something feel like it was going to happen. I don't like... I like being entertained. I, I have a short attention span, as people can imagine, and I like to entertain myself. So I would bring something from somewhere and generally that would be from just who I am and how I am how how I wear my heart on my sleeve or how animated I am I would like to create something from nothing because believe it or not when the crowd get going there it helps Lauren it helps her running fast it gets her excited she suddenly had a smile on her face mm. yeah it was a bit wayward but that's what comes in with charging in and bowling fast it's going to be wayward but there'll be that ball in the middle that they can't handle and yeah. that's what you saw there and the crowd don't understand how important they are for that yeah do you, do you think you know that passion that obviously caused such success and energy in the English side do you ever mm. think do you know what I some probably didn't need to get you know quite as <laughs> vocal and because you know you are someone that expresses himself and expresses yeah. frustration at yourself at others at opposition at yeah. umpires that's just part of who you are yeah it's true it is true and I always wished I could limit it or harbour it or channel it um, in some way and it's just me like I do not mean it in a malicious way in a negative way it's just pure raw emotion I am human and there are sports where you can get away with this like I watch boxing and I, I like the UFC funnily enough and you, you watch the press conferences the interviews the way they talk on the media it's it's awful they're swearing constantly they're being absolutely vile to each other but it's okay but when it comes to us you're on a pitch right if you're a batter you get a first baller you walk off you can destroy the changing room yeah about two and a half minutes later you're a bowler you're having a bad day you are on show for hours mm. what where do you cry where do you where do you scream who do you shout at like it's it's impossible and people just don't give you a break they don't understand what that feels like, what that fire in your belly's doing, and you're constantly trying to keep that at bay because not only are there microphones within meters of you, <laughs> but you're on telly and there's six different cameras from six different animals. My mum used to say, I can lip read, you know. <laughs> After every game, I can lip read and just be like, oh, I can't do anything. <laughs> but, but do you think there's enough spoken about that? Because it, oh. it, is, it is a challenge for playing. We've seen it the history of the game you see you know bowlers particularly bowlers so frustrated mm. and having to really bottle it up yeah I, and I have I from experience have a lot of sympathy for them because this is the pinnacle this is we're on a world stage we're the best in the world this is no joke to us this is life and death that's the way I see a game of cricket when I play it it's not just a game it's not just for a laugh and I wish I could think more like that. The people who show no emotion and smile when they get smacked for six, I'm so envious of those people. So I'm like, are we in the same game? This is like a world, this is a world cup. I've waited four years to be here. It's a short career. Um, I'm representing England. Like, I'm proud and passionate. And then it just doesn't bother them if, you know, if we make a mistake. And, when all you do day in day out as an athlete is strive for perfection and to be better those things bother you mm. a l way more than they should mm. Sadie asks if you could play one cricket match ever again what format would it be who would you be playing against and where would you want to play it oh well, it's obvious it's Ashes against Australia Wacker okay I loved that, loved that pitch. It's why I went to the Perth Scorchers in the first place. I love bowling fast. I miss bowling fast. I used to bowl fast, but I had to change. My, I had nearly three back surgeries because I like charging in and I very much had to turn into a skillful bowler who was accurate because I would not have lasted more than five years. So I, I miss that. I miss being young. Watching Philo is, is hard. It's because I, I can taste what how that used to feel. Um, and I had it. We had a test match for Australia at the WACA. And some of the happy. I, my disc was hanging out my spine at the time, and I had surgery not long after that. 
um, but I nonetheless charged in. And for those that haven't bowled at the Wacker and are aspiring seamer, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> there's pace, there's bounce, there's fire. And against Australia, because because why not <laughs> is that the team that for you and I guess that's what Sadie's getting you know is that the team that you just really oh. fires you up yeah and I would take it personal because that's how I tick I have to have a fight so I wonder if I'd been good at UFC <laughs> <laughs> just says so game into my head um, so what I do right this is what I do I get into a game and I look at the opposition and I go right who am I who's my who am I taking on Who's, who's, who've I got to be better than today on the scorecard and in my heart I've got to be better than them today and I would ask the girls who are you taking on today so Nat you're taking on Pez I'm taking on I don't know and I wouldn't go I wouldn't make it easy so it wouldn't be I wouldn't be taking on Darcy Brown I want an all rounder too because I have pride in my batting and I want somebody better I guess so I'd I would normally say I'll take Pez and I think that's why that fight has always been there for her, because I would always be, it would be something like Sophie Devine, Elise Perry. I would go after the best all-rounders in the world, and I want to be better than them every single time, and that's what got my juices flowing. Mm. Santosh in West Bridgeford, not far from here, uh, says that the success of the Women's Premier League in India, how far do you think the women's game can go, and is there possibly a danger that franchise cricket could take over from the international game? Yes. Of course it can. Um, the introduction of it is unbelievable. It's the best thing that's ever happened to us because it now is, for instance, my wage v James Anderson's wage. It's non... It might be 3% of his. It's just not... I can't secure my life with that, but he can. He can make investments and by the end of his career could never do another job and doesn't have to earn another penny if he w doesn't want to it's different for us so this coming along helps us secure the rest of our lives so that we don't feel so bloody crap and anxious whilst we're playing about oh I didn't go to school because I went straight in to play for England oh, I don't have an education to fall back on oops like oh, I don't really want to go back to school at 40 do you know what I mean so mm. this is like a pin pe picture I'm trying to paint for the, the women it's changing now, of course, and it, but slowly and, and steadily. But the IPL has brought in that figure of money that's life-changing for a lot of people. Um, so, and that can only get better. So I absolutely am all for it because if our countries don't do it, it's got to come from somewhere. And yes, people will maybe have to make a choice as they get older because your body can only be stretched too far and... This is the conversations I'm having with Natalie at the minute and they're ongoing, but she's very much like me. We're very passionate. We want to represent England for the whole time that we play our careers and nothing will tear us away from that. But you've got the rest of your life to think about and your body and how you abuse it, if you like. And mm -hmm. those opportunities are fantastic. They're 15 years too late, um, but they're here and we'll concentrate on that instead. The TMS Podcast. Keep up to date with live text and highlights during the match on the BBC Sport website and app. Money. Glamour. Politics. Spying. Violence. Takeovers. Kidnapping. And photocopying. This is Sport's Strangest Crimes. From the man who tried to buy cricket. One night, one game, winner take all, 20 US million dollars. The kidnap of a super horse. It must have been terrifying. Of course it was. How we got through all it on? A trillion dollar takeover which never took off. Broadsters of this level, they will never stop. And an ill-advised errand changing F1 forever. It will haunt the people involved for as long as they live. Sport's Strangest Crimes. Listen on BBC Sounds. <laughs> The TMS Podcast. Hear every ball of every match in the men's and women's ashes live on Radio 5 Sports Extra and BBC Sounds. Do you view yourself, and though, of course, you know, any cricketer who's retiring now would want to be 15 years younger, just because it is a different world, but do you, do you see the significance of the role you played in playing over such a sort of developmental time in the women's game in getting it from where it was to where it is? 
No, it's, it's not hard to see, is it? Because I've lived every day of it for 19 years. So that's obviously a very long and slow time for me. Whereas if you looked back on my life now in a, I don't know, a highlights package, I could probably see it. I'd go, oh, crikey, look where we were when we wore that and when we bowled like that and when we battered like that and our bats were pants and we could barely hit it off the square. And yeah, like, so if you did that, yes, I can see it. But from a, like, in my heart, it's hard to know I was, you know, I was part of, I know I am, but it's hard to see it. Yeah. yeah, and when people say it, it means a lot. I have a lot. I had so many messages when I retired, and it meant a lot to me. Like it was, it was overwhelming actually, the amount of love and support I got from people. Well, Jim in Howarth says congratulations on on your retirement, uh, and mentions a career spanning twenty years, and asks, is the lengthy career now potentially a thing of the past, given the fact that so much more cricket is being played? Yeah, it is, especially if you choose to do everything. So if you're a Nat or a Sophie, you're, you're playing... So Nat and Sophie are different in that they're obviously quite... There's a gap in age. So Sophie's going to do everything. She's going to say yes to everything. She's going to do the IPL, she's going to do WBBL, she's going to do fair break, she's going to do the 100, she's going to do the three England tours you have in the year. She's going to do her, her Lancashire stuff and, the, you know, all that. That's a lot. You're at home for two, three weeks a year if you do that you, you men, the mental side of it will catch up with you you don't see it but it will with Nat she's seven years older she's more mature she looks after her body more it's just how it works when I was Sophie's age I did the same thing and, and you start to prioritise and so Nat will miss a tour here she'll say no to fair break she'll say no to the WBBL which she has done for now three years in a row and prioritise England but prioritise maybe where she can help her family with the BBL. So it's different, isn't it? Mm. Um, but it's, it's grueling, it's yeah. savage, isn't it? I mean, it? when you put it like that, two or three weeks at home yeah, a year, it's and true. it would be if you add it all up. Absolutely, because don't forget, we're at Loughborough every week, all year, other than when you get three weeks off twice a year, and even then it's interrupted. So... Don't forget, like, they say, oh, it's six weeks, I only get two weeks a year, and four weeks, don't you, normally, normal jogs. So, yeah, but our bodies will break down. We, like, your body needs that. It's a must. So, yeah, so those people that live away from Loughborough, like um, Sophie, in, if you like, in Manchester, that's a lot of travel. So they're where, that's where you miss out on home. Me and myself, myself and Natalie have more time at home because we made the decision to move to Loughborough. So we wouldn't have to travel mm. for those Loughborough weeks so that we could sleep in our own beds because that was important to us. And Yeah, there are some decisions to make if you want to protect your mental health, I guess. Mm. I, I remember seeing in late 2018, mm. arriving at the team hotel to do an interview in the T20 World Cup and you were on the back of a golf buggy. <laughs> Your back had gone. Yeah. And I thought, this, mm. this player's never playing again. No. But you did. And you kept playing for another five years. But how is the body now? Because it is, you know, you've been through a lot injury work. It has. I've, I have put it through a lot. I've been, I've been bad to it. Um, some of the things I've put it through are unreal. In that 2018 World Cup, I went away, in, I went away injured. And I don't know how I did it. I went through nine weeks of hell. It was hell. I just wanted the surgery just to make it stop, just to make the pain stop. But... Um, a third surgery at that point would have spelled the end so I didn't really want to take that risk and I, w I just went through it um, so that I would last but it's, it's just in my head it's my head my head can't stop it can't say no I don't know how I retired to be honest really? yeah because I'm still good enough I'm still ready but the last two years I have not dedicated myself to cricket in the way that I have before so I I'd felt I owed it to stop if I couldn't give it everything. Mm. And that should have been two years ago because right. that's where I was at in my head. So, for instance, I used to be, for a decade and a half, the, fast, the, the fittest and the strongest person in that team and no one will beat me because that's my mentality. Not no one. 
I didn't want to be second in anything. Um, so when that teetered off, I knew what I was capable of, but I just didn't want to push myself. Mm. And I thought, well, I'm still first in the team and still doing all right. Maybe I don't need to. And as soon as that creeps in, that mentality, you shouldn't be at the top because you're not giving it all. I didn't... When I'm on the pitch, I'll give you 100%, but my skill level isn't to 100% because I haven't put the 100% in before that. But I never gave anything less than my all when I crossed the line. That will never be questioned. Yeah. But yeah, I, uh, yeah. And I have to live with that because that's not a good feeling. No, but it's one I think that is recognisable for people in all sorts of life situations. Yeah. In the fullness of time, you can see it, can't you? Yeah, but, people but our age will know it gets harder as yeah. you get older, and they've got that to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Rich in Birmingham saying, I was hoping to ask Catherine about a certain situation that recently arose in the men's game. Jack Leach got injured. People searching high and low for an English spinner who would ideally be world-class and able to bowl consistently on a 50p piece. You know where this is going. Maybe have a bit of height, bounce, plenty of spin control and variation. <laughs> Sophie Eccleston, question mark. Could she do a job? I mean, this this is a question. It happened with Sarah Taylor. It'll happen again in the future. Yeah. What a question. It's funny that it comes up, isn't it? Like, we haven't spent our entire childhoods facing... Because don't forget, Sophie's got to face 90 mile an hour bowling. She wouldn't last two minutes. She'll tell you that. She would would go for it because she's played plenty of men's cricket. She don't care. She's very much one of the lads. But she wouldn't last... like. But if, had she grown up 10 years facing at 80 mile an hour and being in that hostile environment, facing that shorter length that boys bowl on a, as a normal length, maybe. But they shouldn't be asked, like, this should just not be a question. Like, she is very good at what she does. And yes, I do believe she could probably hold her own because she does bowl. Nathan Lyon bowls 57, she bowled, she can bowl 56. Like, she's tall. She has a man's stature, like she's strong, she's repeatable, of course, but it's silly to think that, you know, Moeen Ali, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I, I, I almost don't want to answer it, it's that, yeah. it's that awkward. Um, yeah, there's plenty of very talented Englishmen's cricketers that could do that role. Um, we just, you know, haven't tapped into them yet. We, we all often have this debate don't we and we do. Uh, and it sort of it's, it always seems to pop up but uh, but yeah so um this one from the wbbl fan page uh, how does it feel to be watching an ashes test from the sidelines because <laughs> you say ashes cricket you mentioned the whacker in 2014 is this the absolute pinnacle yeah absolutely and i think it's the most asked question i've had um this week for sure because well it's here and everybody knows i love it Test cricket is the be all and end all for me. It's what I enjoy watching the most, and um, even more than that, playing. It's great because there's so many. It's a it's a ride. It's a um, emotional journey, and it's it's a test of everything to its absolute fullest. And I love that. I love getting in the dirt and being ground to the bone, physically and mentally, like. At why, the time, you don't do think you? you do. Why? I don't know. Because I just love giving my all. I love trying hard. I love challenges. Um, I like people doubting me. I don't know. And I, I love helping people, supporting people. Like, I, every time I've come on, it's to help my team, not to be to get a wicket for me. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't care less. I want us to win. I'm going to try and help that. And... Yeah, if I see it going badly, well, I want to change that. Like, yeah, it's hard to it's hard to describe. Becky asked, "Do you think we'll ever see a Washes series <laughs> with multiple tests, or even just Test cricket, rather than the multi-format? Uh, is it something that you and other players would like to see, or would you like to see maybe even three Tests, three ODIs, three T20s to differentiate the Ashes from other multi-format series?" Um, no, I, I don't think you will see it. Um, would I like to see it? Yes, of course. Who wouldn't want to see it? I, for me, uh, I would like to. But the reason I say it won't happen is because women's cricket especially is definitely going more into the white ball side of things because it's the most watched. We, at the end of the day, 
to keep our sport going forward and thriving, we have to put bums on seats and viewers tuning in. And the only way to do that is to provide entertainment. I think the stats show that, well, they've changed recently and it's been brilliant, but people tune in more, entertain more by our white ball format. And that's what we're governed by. Regardless of what we want, or what we prefer, or what we like doing, we're not governed by our feelings. We're governed by numbers and figures. And well, I think it's the same the world over in, across men's and women's cricket. It's white ball cricket yeah. it is you know often the the thing that generates. The yeah, and that's why Brendan McCullum and Ben Stokes are trying to make it sexy again, mm. if you like. That's the word that's thrown around. It's entertainment, in, inspiring, entertaining, and it's the only reason that that crowd at Edgebaston was going off till the very last ball it's because they're changing the way people view that form of the game one little stat from yesterday there's over 7,000 here at Trent Bridge and uh, that number is more than attended the whole of the Taunton Test match four years ago so that's <laughs> yeah. a little bit of an indication of, of where the growth <laughs> yeah. has been right then Alison says what was your favourite ball to bowl and who would be your choice of death bowler <laughs> um, you can't say yourself yeah no I wouldn't actually not in recent years maybe back in the day um Favourite ball to ball it has to be in my, the swing. Like The wobble ball was the dangerous one because you've got less time to react. And sometimes through the air, if you're the batsman, it does feel like it's not coming back. So it was that was the best ball I had, but my favourite one to ball is there's nothing better than seeing it hoop past them or hoop back into the pads. Like That was my favourite. Um, after that, actually, when the, when the one out the back, the one that you know at the back of the hand the slow ball if that moves when it lands that's also pretty exciting mm. and then what was the second question death bowler who death who bowler would you choose? who would I go Chris Jordan <laughs> 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 what a Yorker bowler oh um, death bowler you know Sophie Eccleston mm. she's not shown you a lot yet but and this is the funny thing between training and playing and what really annoys me is we can be so good at training. I could bowl 20 Yorkers in a row the day before. I'm going to the game, I can't land one. And then like, it's just like my mind is gone. You had a batter there and they just like mess with you or, or f- someday Skip has changed your ends that you practiced from yesterday and you're uphill now a bit and it changes things Sophie Eccleston always wins the Yorker challenge always bowling scene bowling no spin okay because you said earlier she does bowl a little bit and that yeah she does bowl she can she can swing it actually back if she wants but um, yeah she can she can bowl but and and why why not have a spin at bowl of death because it's sometimes the last thing you expect but unbeknownst to everyone in the world she she gets that Yorker in more than anyone you know I've seen ever mm. in our squads righto Joseph says do you support the creation of domestic multi-day competitions in the next five years so that the only Red Bull cricket played isn't just the test matches I mean is there time I suppose say that again so time. would you like to see a Red Bull, Red Bull domestic Red. competition <sighs> like I said I just I just don't think like look at, we're governed by money and opportunity and I don't think facilities wise um, opportunity wise ground wise that that would be a possibility just because of how little we play internationally so it'd be lovely it'd be so good don't get me wrong I'm not saying I'm not an advocate for it I am because then that would make this game better because these Filer would have come from playing had playing some red ball cricket um, instead of just being like here you go off you go <laughs> Um, so yeah, it'd be great because there's all. I imagine all 120 contracted players we have will be licking their lips and wanting to try this themselves. Yeah. Definitely, I know there's people around the world, the Kiwis, itching to play a Test mm. match. Like, it's, yeah, it's sad that they can't and they don't get that opportunity. We do. It's slightly mad, isn't it? Really, that you're asking players to come out and play a format they've never <laughs> played. I mean, Lauren Bell yeah. said it last year. Well, I've played 14 in 20 years. Yeah. What on earth? And, like. that, and that is a mighty test career yeah. in the women's And game. with a bad back, you just expected... So you're bowl, used to bowling four overs in a spell weather, ten overs max and dying. Could you just bowl 45 today? <laughs> but I'd like you to get through an ODI and T20 series after. Yeah. 
It's uh, just mad. It is mad, physically. Joe in Wolverhampton, do you fancy getting into coaching? What sort of coach would you be? <laughs> I'd be rogue. <laughs> 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 oh, yes. It would be fun. I'd probably last a year because I'd get sacked because they'd be like, what on earth is going on here? My main priority would be to make all my players feel great. What I hate is I've obviously been in the changing room, right? And behind the scenes. And there's so much bitching. Us girls, we love a natter and a bitch because we're always emotional. Because we're all, you know, sink. <laughs> I'll leave that to the imagination. <laughs> but I like, I've always been on the thing of like, how do you make everybody happy? And you cannot, by the way. You cannot make 15 people happy. But you can, you can try your damnedest to get near 13, maybe. So it would be to... Have everyone genuinely believe in you. Because people say, oh, I believe in you, but deep down they don't. They don't believe what you're doing. And that's only because they didn't get an opinion. So everybody would have an opinion. Everybody would, we would try and get everybody happy. And it would, that would be my go-to first. Because to, I feel, to get the best out of someone, like I, I think this game's mainly mental. Because your natural talent, Sarah had 99.9% natural ability and she trained for half a percent she'll tell you that <laughs> <laughs> she ain't trained <laughs> but that's the beauty of like natural talent but what I'm trying to say is I, I would work more on that side of things because um, happy players play well mm. happy people have a happy life it, and I would just be people first I think to get the best out of someone you've got to gain their trust their respect and they need to believe in you wholeheartedly. And that, for me, is when I've worked at my best. I'm not assuming everyone works like me. Of course not. So, But I think it's a good place to start. Um, and, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I would. Uh, yeah, but, but maybe not head coach. I don't know. It's quite a big responsibility. So you'd it? just be the sort of the hype. <laughs> the mentor. I'm happy to try things, you know. Like if an assistant, roach co uh, assistant coach role came away... Yeah, okay, cool. And a, a franchise thing came away? Yeah, I'll give it a go. A mentor, a bowling consultant? Yeah, 